I think for Rachel, she's carrying a lot on her shoulders. You know, she's a single mother, she's just recently divorced. And so when this moment happens on the road, um, everything's just heightened to another level. But through that, I think she learns a lot about herself and um, her bond with her son is also definitely strengthened as well. I don't think she thinks she's a good mother and I don't know that many, many mothers think that they're good mothers. I think Rachel does live with a lot of regret because um, she doesn't have a lot of time. The man represents, I think, uh, the anger that we hold as a society um, and how it's made perhaps that anger is not dealt with properly. And, um, and then, you know, it's the road is like this place where it sort of culminates and the storm can kind of be built up and it sort of explodes. Road rage, you know, it doesn't discriminate. The story will travel across the world, you know, because everybody will be able to relate and have a story. inspiring really as an actor you know for me I'm, I'm super I've been really I just feel really lucky to have been around him and I've been really watching and kind of trying to absorb as much as possible. Again like Derek has just been so great from the beginning he's all about collaborating and just wanting to know what is best for us It would be so easy to judge the man in this film and Rachel, um, but they both have separately have their kind of worlds falling apart in different ways. And, um, and I think, I hope that this film sort of highlights that. It was just one of those scripts that you just kind of pick it up and, and, and you know, can't put it down until you get all the way through it. I think it starts in a way where it's not personal. You know, when you ask if the man has anything to lose, I would say that to him, he's already lost it. He's lost. Uh, on a personal level, he's lost it from from uh, you know losing his family. On a, on an ideological level, he's lost it in uh, that all the institutions that he believed in have have failed him. So, from his perspective, he has nothing to lose. Yeah, Rachel. Rachel's uh, going through a tough time herself. She's kind of uh, become the caregiver for her aging mother, for her uh, younger brother and his girlfriend that are living here at the house, um, and her own son. She's kind of uh, both parents to her son as a single mother with, a, with an ex that's kind of um, uh, less than... Um, less than ideal in terms of fulfilling his responsibilities as a father. I had no idea what to expect working with Russell. All that I found from the very beginning was someone who was incredibly intelligent, very engaged, and just wanted to make the movie as good as it could be. Kind of going through every word of the script and making sure that it felt authentic, authentic to the material. And 
he has amazing ideas, and I, I don't think I've ever worked with anyone who is as acutely aware of what every single person on set is either doing or is supposed to be doing. He really is great at, at talking to anyone and everyone on set and helping them really be the best at their job that they can be. I think that, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of angry people out there where people can't have disagreements and actually talk about them in some way that remains civil and, and productive. The rage that's, that's out there in the world these days. Um, so the film is uh, a great reflection of that. Hopefully it starts a conversation. I think that's really what the best any film can do. I told him, uh, uh, when Russell and I first met, I told him that I always pictured this character of his as the shark in Jaws, where he, you know, he, he shows up, he does some some things that that uh, are very memorable, and uh, and then he's gone, and you don't know when you're going to see him again. And and we kind of together use that as a a touchstone, let's say, for this character. He gets a sense that something bad is about to happen. I think when she refuses to apologize. I think the first moment when he really realizes how much danger they're in is when he listens to the phone call. It was one of the craziest scenes I've ever had to film. Um, but yeah, it's very, intense climax. Um, there's a lot of action, a lot of screaming, a lot of crying. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Uh, my initial thoughts were it was a thrill ride. Uh, and it was also certainly pertinent to uh, to the the state of the nation to the state of, of a lot of uh, countries in that people are losing their shit a lot. And, uh, and here's a reflection in the form of a kick-ass thriller. So I just, I was interested right away. Uh, and then the, the director and the cast were really uh, impeccable. So I jumped on. Well, Andy is uh, the lawyer of our uh, of our lead character, Rachel, um, and he's he's trying to give her some help. Uh, he's a friend. He's also, uh, you know, like I said, a lawyer, and so he's giving her some free legal advice as she goes through a hard time in her life, and he gets swallowed up into this whirlpool of 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 uh, Rachel's road rage uh, incident. I'd say. I'd say the, uh, the first clue that Andy has that the man is not all he's cracked up to be is, is the man swearing in the middle of a diner at his dear friend on the cell phone and then smashing him in the face with a uh, coffee mug. Then he's sure that there's something wrong with him. He's pretty damn sure. You know, uh, it takes a good, awesome movie sometimes to, to be this kind of mirror reflection of what we're doing. And then you see it, you see it kind of uh, in like, two times a thousand. And you're like, oh, I do little bits of that. I want to stop from going all the way off the rails, you know. So, yeah, it's a little wake-up call. I mean, the, 
great thing about this script is that I started reading it, didn't stop, couldn't put it down, straight through. And it's also really relatable. Everyone knows what it's like to have a horrible day. And then to find that there's another guy in a car next to you who's having an even worse day and see where that goes. I think that Rachel showed up in his life at the exact wrong time. And he showed up in her life at the exact wrong time. And those two things were combustible. And he chooses to dismantle her life um, because he can't fix his own. Sure, I, I mean, I feel so incredibly lucky that we have Russell playing the man. I mean, <laughs> There's no one better to do to do this. We've seen him do so many different kinds of parts, but to be kind of a homicidal maniac is so much fun. And yet at the same time, he's created this incredibly detailed and deep character underneath it. He's, he's absolutely terrifying. So I'm very grateful and I sit sometimes in stunned amazement watching the performance that he gives. And we found her. She was in Sydney and she came over here and she read with Russell in a room, the two of them, she just, she was incredible. She's made movies before, but I feel like seeing her with Russell in this part is just a really exciting discovery. I think it's uh, thought-provoking, and it's scary, and it's intense, and I want people to talk about it afterwards. When I read it, my first response, my instinctive response was, absolutely not. I'm not doing this movie. I heard that come out of my mouth and I was like, since when did I stop doing that, you know? Because that's basically what I look for. I look for the challenges that I don't think I can accomplish, you know, the beautiful minds or the master and commanders or whatever, you know, with the violin. And, and then I, I just started to think about it in a different, from a different place. Because one thing I did know is that when I read it, it was a page turner. how it connects to where we are right now, where we are in terms of a seeming inability of people from different perspectives to have a polite conversation with each other. Well, it's a strange thing with this character because he's, we don't really discuss his past. We just give a little indication that at the beginning of the movie that he's involved in something kind of horrific. Because he's already triggered. And it doesn't really matter that it happens to be Rachel. It doesn't really, really matter in a way what she says or what she does. He's just, he's already over the line. She just yells at the wrong dude on the wrong day, you know? And he doesn't care about the consequences because he's already crossed the line. 
he's no longer capable of any level of humanity. He's stepped away from that. And nothing that happens in this movie is rational. Nothing has any logic. It doesn't have any, any true reason. It's just somebody who's own humanity in a way is drained by their experience of, of life. And that's where we get to. He's looking for some kind of balance, some kind of indicator from other people that he's not invisible, that he has some kind of worth. This is a different kind of challenge. I got nothing. I got nothing reasonable, nothing logical, you know, and I've got, I can't use my sense of humor. I can't use my own humanity. I've got to close all of that down in order to show a person like this. But it just felt like the the most unlikely thing that I should be doing. So that's why I did it. But there was just something about her that kind of lent into that combined vulnerability and strength of a Nicole Kidman or a Meryl Streep. There was just something, some depth in her eyes that you know, both of us, we just had the same thought at the same time. When she left the room, he just turned around and he, Derek the, bought the, the director and he just said, it's her, right? And I agree with him. That question, how am I going to do that? That's one of the most exciting places you can be as an actor in cinema. How the fuck am I going to do that, you know? And, uh, you know, so it's, it's been really healthy, more than healthy, it's been, it's been really great.